Alright, why did Naruto go downhill? And the reason is because all the risk element in this series was just drained out completely. We see characters in Shippuden using powerful jutsu with no consequences, and even characters getting into dangerous situations with no punishment. And this is a problem because basically you get endless scenarios of characters coming out completely unscathed with limitless uh, basically potential. One example we have in part one Naruto of a character, you know, having a consequence from using a powerful jutsu is Hiruzen. He uses the death rupee seal on Orochimaru and consequently dies because of it. Similarly, well, not similarly, the opposite happens in Shippuden where basically, uh, let's just Naruto. Naruto basically has limitless chakra. He can use basically, you know, a million Rasen shurikens and basically it doesn't affect him at all. But what I wanted to really uh, focus on is that is when this series actually went downhill. And I think this happened when Neji and Choji survived part one. Um, it basically just opened up a whole, you know, slew of just really bad. Um, oh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, it basically opened the Pandora's box of basically just BS that happens in the series. And, yeah, I feel like if Kishimoto would have, like, you know, killed those characters off, it would have made the whole series a whole lot better. There would have been way more tension in certain situations, um, especially in Shippuden, and also it would have raised the stakes um, for every battle. Um, yeah. I think that's about it. Oh, also, yeah, the filler episodes are just absolute garbage, and they should never have been included in the series. Alright, that's about it.